Hello and welcome to worship. Today is Sunday, January 31st, 2021. I'd like to thank you for joining me and the people of Wardsville and Glencoe Presbyterian Churches as we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Rev. Deb Dolbear Van Bilsen. In our community news this week, the mission moment from the National Church encouraging us to pray about the knowledge that nourishes babies and families. When Christina Fleet gave birth to her first baby, she wasn't aware of how crucial exclusive breastfeeding and developmental activities could be to her child's long-term health. When her second child was born, Christina attended a workshop facilitated by Presbyterian World Service and Development's local partner in Nicaragua. With other mothers, Christina learned the importance of breast milk, for her child's developing brain, and how to create materials to stimulate her child's mind. Additionally, culinary classes empowered parents with tools to help their family's overall health. With PWS and D support, families are combating malnutrition and chronic illness, giving their babies the best chance for a future of good health. And this week, I would like to wish a happy birthday to Donna Jones on the 1st, which is tomorrow, and happy birthday, Erla Walker and Tristan Fisher on the 6th of February. If you or someone you love is celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week, we wish you a blessed and wonderful day. Our call to worship is on the screen. God's praise endures forever, and eternity meets us in fleeting moments. God's praise endures forever, and glory bursts into ordinary activities. God's praise endures forever, and faith is steadfast even in the midst of change and challenge. Let us worship the eternal God who calls us to this time and place. Our praise selection is on the screen. Worship His Majesty Unto Jesus Be all glory, honor, and praise Majesty Kingdom authority Flows from His throne unto His own Worship His majesty. majesty Unto Jesus Be all glory, honor, and praise Majesty, majesty. Kingdom authority Flows from His throne unto His own
falls from His throne unto His own, His anthem reigns. So exalt, exalt on high the name of Jesus. Let's magnify. Let us pray. We praise you, loving God, as we enter this time and space in our day and our week to worship you. We gladly come to this sacred time. Prepare us, empty us of the cares and concerns of life, and open us to receive your word. We give you thanks for this time of renewal, refreshment, and healing Sabbath rest. Let your Holy Spirit guide our thoughts, words, and prayers so that our actions might be synchronized as we turn our hearts in spirit and truth toward you now. Living Christ, we are sorry for not expecting great things when we encounter you. We become distracted and come to worship out of habit. Often we are strangely resistant to your grace. There are so many times we turn from you, O God. We forget that food for body and soul comes from you and your goodness. We focus on what troubles us and ignore the help and healing you offer. We seek wisdom and meaning in the wrong places. We confess we can be cruel, harming the earth, other living beings, and even one another. Forgive us, Lord. Open our eyes to the wonder and the wisdom of your grace. Help us to be amazed by your presence and renew in us a sense of your glory and holiness. All this we pray, through Christ our Savior. And now, as he has taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. Hear these words of salvation from Second Corinthians 5. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old life is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Christ, the Holy One of God, has saved us from our sins. All thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus' ministry was often filled with challenge and choice. We face challenge and choice as we follow him in a new day and age. The invitation to give an offering week by week in itself is a challenge. The gifts we choose to offer continue his ministry of healing and hope. So take the challenge and give as God has blessed you. I encourage you to give what you are able and called to give to your local church that you love, the charity of your choice, or as the Lord leads you to give. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we bring our gifts to you, asking that you bless them, so that they may accomplish more than we can ask or imagine in your name. Bless us, too, so that our lives speak of our choice to follow you, and our ministries offer the healing and hope you have offered us. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our praise selection is on the screen.
Our scripture reading this week is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. And this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and he has just called four of his disciples. And so this is where we begin. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. But then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him, and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority? He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Thanks be to God for his holy and everlasting word. Amen. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God our rock and our redeemer. Well, you know what it 
is like when you have kids and whether they're your own kids or nieces and nephews or grandchildren or the neighbor's kids. You know what I mean when I say it's quiet and you know what the kids are doing. And you know the difference between that kind of quiet and it's been quiet for quite a while. I wonder what could be happening right now. And that is how we can approach the reading from today's scripture in the Gospel of Mark. Because we are looking for peace and quiet. And Jesus comes. And John the Baptist has already said all that he needs to to pave the way, to prepare the people. And here we are. Jesus has just uh, called four of the disciples and they walk into the synagogue. They might smell like fish because they're, he's with the fishermen. And as they walk in, he is ready to teach. And everybody looks they wait, and Jesus begins. Now, we don't know the content of what he's actually saying, but what's interesting is that immediately there is a response because Jesus doesn't refer to Moses said this or so-and-so rabbi by the name of says this. Jesus takes on the authority himself, and he says the kingdom of God is near. And the response is this shriek, this yell from this demon-possessed man. And here the Jews that were there that day were hearing something for the first time. So perhaps they had been teaching, whether they were scribes and Pharisees or whoever they were, and there had been no reaction. But this time, there is. And when Jesus was, was teaching, he was asked, Are you here to destroy us? The demon recognized Jesus as the Messiah as the Christ, and he wanted to know if they were going to be destroyed. Jesus' answer was with authority. Jesus spoke with authority, and when he commanded that demon-possessed man that the spirit come out of him. The spirit was resistant, but had no power over Jesus. And immediately that spirit came out with a shriek and with convulsions. And instantly, immediately, the man was healed. And everyone in the synagogue was amazed. Because they had seen teaching, they had heard teaching, the teaching of the law from the scribes and the Pharisees, but they had never witnessed or experienced the presence and the power of Jesus Christ and his healing. So the content of what Jesus was preaching at that point, we don't know, but we know that what he preached was backed by what he did in action. So um, this past week, uh, we had the hashtag Bell Let's Talk and Blue Monday uh, as well, uh, highlighting the importance of talking about mental health and eliminating the stigma around mental illness. And the beginning of healing comes 
through knowing Jesus and being educated and learning and knowledge. But it doesn't stop there. Then we become acquainted with someone and we share intimate conversations and grow in a relationship. And that is with Christ. That is with Jesus, the second person of the Holy Spirit, or, or of the Trinity, with the Holy Spirit being the third. And so by the power that Jesus commands and uh, exercises that demon is the way by which we too have the ability to heal and pray and see results. And upon healing, Jesus shows us there's action. Our mission after our healing, and that might not be the way we expect to be healed, but whatever the healing may be, once the healing comes, we have the expectation of action, and that is our mission that's making disciples. Now, as I mentioned, who's this guy that came into the synagogue? Did you know that the synagogue was recognized not as the place itself, but it was a gathering of 10 Jewish men, wherever they would meet, as they were studying the word. And so they'd be looking and reading and studying the, the Hebrew scriptures. And wherever they did that, that was called synagogue. And so really, just think about what that means today since Christ came, where two or three are gathered. So in other words, wherever we are, when we study God's word, this is the church. So whether it's my home, or it's a gathering at the uh, fair building, or on the um, grass at the train station, wherever we gather. Maybe it's your walk in the woods. Maybe it's um, cross-country skiing and enjoying the outdoors. Or maybe it's simply meditating in a chair quietly at home. Regardless of that place, what God is saying, uh, I believe in this scripture today, we hear God challenging the church in 2021, especially in the midst of our pandemic, um, that we do not give up and we look ahead. We look forward and we start to see that God has a new plan. Well, he's always had the plan, but it will be new to us as for a direction that he wants the church to go. He wants everyone to know, to repent and to know Christ as their Savior and their Lord. He wants everyone to know that the world is not about one person. It is not about me. Rather, it's about our Almighty God and glorifying Him. And our God is not one. Our God is three in one. And so we give that authority and power uh, to the utmost to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit so that he might direct our paths and lead us. And so who is Christ? 
the people were astonished. They just didn't really know. But the demons already recognized who Jesus was. He spoke with authority and intimacy. And immediately, the demonic spirit is compelled to speak up, but not quietly, rather screaming about being destroyed and then calling Jesus the Holy One of God. Jesus the Nazarene is being compared to Samson, that strong man who made a Nazarene vow in the Old Testament. Remember, he had, he had the long hair and he is now being compared to Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus has both authority and power over demonic power. And demonic power then has no hope. All the re religious authorities do not recognize Jesus as supernatural because he is not the Messiah they were expecting. Doesn't mean that he was not acting in the supernatural, but they thought he was going to be this strong militaristic king. They thought he was going to be one who was in power and control and dominated. But Jesus came in with a heart of compassion for his people and his people being all the people all around the world. Remember that God said that he sent his only son that not one should perish, but all will have everlasting life. All who trust and believe him. When we believe in Christ, our hope is sure. You know, miracles and amazing signs are just not sufficient in themselves. We must give, uh, pardon me, we must be given the faith and the eyes to see the revelation given by God so that we can experience a change, a transformation. When Jesus rebukes that demonic spirit, it leaves him with that drama and what a show for everyone to see. No one missed that show. Everyone witnessed that man immediately healed. Jesus' personal involvement with and a love for uh, his subject matter made it clear that he was speaking not so much from his head, but he was speaking from his heart. So it comes as no surprise that the people in Capernaum were amazed again and again. They had never met anyone like Jesus before. And you and I know they would never meet anyone like Jesus again. The authority of Jesus versus human authority. And we see that there is no parallel. Jesus' authority rules. Who is this guy, Jesus? It's a big question. And it's a question that we still ask today. Who is Jesus to you? Jesus to me is not only the healer of um, our bodies, not only the healer of our minds, 
but ultimately the healer of our spirits. And when we can allow him to um, heal us of not only the negative thinking, but to allow us to give him all rule over our lives and we sit to listen to hear his voice his still small voice then it is at that point in time that we are transformed because just um, through the gospel of mark and how we're, we talked about baptism and we've um, referred to it. We are being cleansed. And we are cleansed and healed by the authority and power of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. And we find new life, new hope, um, restoration, and um, breath. When we can finally come to a place and not feel we have to control everything. The demonic spirit in the synagogue lost control, lost power, lost uh, a sense of identity because Jesus challenged how comfortable that he, he was in that man inside him. And it was like it was the sin that needed to come out. And so for me, um, over this past while, uh, I continue to pray, Lord, take whatever in me that does not glorify you. Remove it and replace it with something of you and your love for me and your compassion for the world so that I can experience you dwelling, living in here, in my heart so that my mind will be led in the way of the love in my heart. What are you going to ask for from God? And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Let me set the stage for you. You are in your kitchen and you have your children or your grandchildren, niece, nephew, um, neighbor kids, and they love to come and sit and play and they're busy and suddenly they leave the kitchen and they're off and about and they're playing and it gets quiet and you can still sense that they are within range of hearing and you know that they are uh, playing because you can just sense or hear it. And a few minutes later, it's suddenly so quiet, so still that you wonder what is going on? 
super quiet. Well, when we come into the scriptures today, we come to Mark and here it is. Jesus has just uh, gone and called the four disciples and they show up with him to Capernaum to go to the synagogue. And now in Jesus' time, the synagogue could be um, any place that you were together, gathered, 10 men worshiping, uh, reading the Hebrew scriptures, and studying the word. So it didn't have to be the, that specific place. Now, it was this particular day, and they're going on the Sabbath, and they are worshiping. Now, they worshipped every single day, so it wasn't unusual, but what happened was the Sabbath at that point in time wasn't Sunday. It was the last day of the week. It was on Saturday, and on that day of the week, that was the one day when people would make a specific time and their whole day would be dedicated to the Word of God. Let us pray. Holy God, Lord of heaven and earth, in you we live and move and have our being. Your energy fills the cosmos and enlivens every cell of our bodies. You are all around us, within us and beyond us. Thank you for the simple pleasures of each day and for the strength to meet the challenges that arise. When it feels like we have come to the end of our own resources, replenish us with the energy of your spirit so that we know you are there for us and with us. In these strange times of isolation and distancing, we are grateful for prayer in its many forms for the intimate ways we can find communion with you in word and in silence, in music and in movement, in the Spirit's breath within us. Draw close to us when we are feeling frustration or fear in the days ahead and renew our spirits to continue serving you as best we can. Hear us now as we pray for the earth this precious and fragile home to all living things, for declining species of plant and animal life, for the earth's climate, for the oceans and the rainforests. Teach us how to be more faithful stewards of your earth and live more respectfully in your creation. Hear us as we pray for the economy, for those whose decisions shape it, for employers and business owners, for workers and those who cannot find work, for those who have lost their jobs and those whose businesses are at risk, for all who seek economic justice, fairness, and the common good and for those who struggle to discern what it means in a complex world. Teach us how to care for our neighbors, Lord, in these days of economic uncertainty. We pray for our own circle of family and friends. Heal, bless, lead, and encourage them. Grant to each one the particular gifts needed this day and lead them to a healthy, productive future. We pray for neighbors and strangers in our community who face struggles and sorrows as the pandemic stretches on. Remind us that we belong to each other and to you and help us respond to one another with compassion and kindness. For those who have recently received a life-changing or challenging diagnosis, or maybe waiting for surgery or tests or test results. For those who have lost a loved one, those in hospital, those shut in, and those challenged to keep moving forward, 
heal your servants, O Lord. We pray for your healing, Lord. Healing for the minds of those experiencing stress, negativity, or pressure. Heal your servants, Lord. We pray for your healing, Lord. Healing for the bodies of those who are unable to move freely and without pain. Heal your servants, Lord. We pray for your healing, Lord. Healing for each person's spirit around the world. We are broken due to the sin of humankind. But we can be healed and set free through Christ our Lord and our Savior. In you we put our trust, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Heal our broken and selfish spirits so we might emulate your love and your compassion in all we are and in all we live day by day. In silence and in the days ahead, while we're in the middle of activities, we bring our cares and hopes on our minds each time. Thank you for healing, hearing our prayers, Lord, and for the healing of every heart. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our closing praise selection will be on the screen.
क्या 